We're also one day away, hours actually, from those Obamacare exchanges that are due to open first thing tomorrow morning. And Senator John Barrasso says those exchanges are being held together with, quote, duct tape and chicken wire. Senator Barrasso is a Republican <laughs> from Wyoming. Uh, Senator, you've got us all laughing here. Now, wait, wait a second, seriously now. Do you think that these exchanges, as you say, held together with duct tape and, chipping, <laughs> duct tape and chipping, chicken wire, do you think that they're going to collapse? Or do you think we'll muddle through? Well, Stuart, I think no matter what happens, the president is going to try to claim victory because, as he said in his address on Thursday, the exchanges are going to open tomorrow uh, no matter what. So, you know, but he also said when he was there in New York with, the, with, uh, with President Clinton, he said it's going to be cheaper uh, to, to buy health insurance than uh, the average monthly cell phone bill, which is $71. And I would say, buyer, beware. See what it's actually going to cost you, even with the subsidies. I think there's going to be significant sticker shock. A number of states, including the District of Columbia, have pulled back and said we're not ready to go yet. Oregon has said it. Uh, in Vermont, there are some problems. So we're seeing that, and I think we're going to see more of that uh, tomorrow all across the country uh, as this goes live. I think people are uh, going to find out that there are real risks to security, uh, worry about uh, a loss in identity theft, uh, and, and specifically, the president said this will be like, you know, as easy as uh, shopping on Expedia or Amazon. And I think people are not going to have that experience when they go to the exchanges. Now, it may or may not actually come to a vote in the Senate. But if it did, this one-year delay of Obamacare, I, again, I don't know whether it will be voted on or not. But if it did, how many Senate Democrats do you think would say, yeah, let's delay it for a year because we don't want it round our neck in the election next year? How many? Yeah, well, I think that you've already seen Joe Manchin from West Virginia uh, say that he would d vote to delay for a year uh, the individual mandate. It's only the fair thing to do. The president always talks about fairness. Well, the president has unilaterally decided to give a one-year exemption to businesses. He's decided to give uh, an exemption for members of Congress and their staff. Uh, you know, he's decided unilaterally to say that the uh, you don't have to verify your income. They're going to use the honor system for giving government subsidies. So it only seems fair that if uh, the bosses are getting an, a, a one-year delay, that the hardworking American taxpayers ought to also get that delay. But the establishment media is going to say this is the fault of a small block of radicals in the Republican Party in the House. They are essentially economic terrorists. That's what the establishment media is saying. Do you think that public opinion is beginning to, sh to change a little, that President Obama and the Democrats may get some of the blame for this shutdown? Well, it seems to me that, that uh, Harry Reid, by delaying for a full day a vote on what the House passed, I think he is eager for a shutdown, as is the president. I think the House passed something that was very responsible, very reasonable, which was intended to keep the government open, which the American people want, and at the same time, try to at least delay for a year the Obama health care law, which we know continues to be unworkable, very unpopular, and for us as a nation, unaffordable. Senator John Barrasso, thanks very much indeed for joining us on an extremely busy day. Thank you very much, Senator. Appreciate it. Thank you, Stuart. Thanks. Sir.